Hi, this is Mahmoud Ibrahim. We are in Boston in 2019. I have with me my friend Philip Gonzalez. He has been doing uh, real estate. He has been a real estate agent for 33 years. So I have some question for you. Is there a good time to buy if I want to buy? Do I have to wait for a good time? Well, years ago you could just say that. Because you could say, okay, I'm going to wait for the winter time, let the house sit there for a while, and I'll, I'll go and get a deal. But these nowadays, with the interest rates so low, and there's so many influx of Boston people coming into this location, it's just booming this area with multiple offers on the property with buyers. And it's, it's just right, right now is the time to buy because the market's just going soaring on, on us. And we don't know when it's going to stop. Okay, you mean now in 2019? Yes. We don't know when this market is going to slow down. I even think if the market does have a little crash, it's not going to harm this, this, the outskirts of Boston so bad because it's so many people coming here. They don't want to spend the Boston prices. They're coming here and spending five, six million dollars for their houses in these outskirts of Everett, Malden, Revere, Chelsea. So if even Boston. in Lynn. Lynn, the three families for 700000 right now. No, yeah, it's amazing. It's Yes, and you tell people to buy, it's okay to buy even 700000 Okay, so how, if, if I go to a house and see, like it says, uh, the seller says 700000 is that like I'm overpaid? How I know the real value of the house? Good question, real good question. The thing is this, it's all what the, some, a lot of what the public will pay. Now, they could overbid the property by $50,000. Say, for instance, the house is on the market for $700,000, and no bids come in, $710,000, $720,000, $730,000, $750,000. The bank comes in, does the appraisal. Appraisal's at $725,000. That's what the house is worth. Now, you got to either negotiate, the buyer can negotiate, and the seller can negotiate, say, okay, I really want this house. I'll give you $10,000 out of my pocket to keep, so I can keep this deal. I want this house. Or the buyer can say, I don't want it. I, I'm walking away. Okay. So uh, you said the bank is not going to loan you the money if the house doesn't work. doesn't work. Right. It's, it gets part of your conti mortgage contingency on your purchase and sales agreement. Okay. So the... the, 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 the and you get your deposit back and everything, which is important. Okay. If, if the appraisal say, no, the house doesn't work. Right. So what is the good place to buy in Boston area? I mean, like in Massachusetts. Well, oh, is there any upcoming cities? In like Brockton, Worcester, um, ha um, Haverhill. Uh, that, this is what I'm hearing. Brockton, Worcester, and Haverhill is what I've been hearing lately. What's the prices? They're going up. <laughs> I've been watching the Haverhill market. I've got someone out there today looking at some Haverhill property. And there's no three families out there to be had. There's not many. And that that's, means the inventory is low. That means it brings the market up. So it's a good place to buy Haverhill. Yes. Uh, like two years ago, it's a very good place to buy in Malden. What is the prices now after the casino? Oh, um, the casino... It was raising before the casino was even built. As the casino was being built, the market was just going up and up and up. Yes. I think, I think, right, we reached our peak. I think we've reached the peak, though. Okay. I don't think we've gone. I, I don't think we can go any higher. Oh, there's no reason. No, I can't because the appraisals ain't gonna hold. Hold. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Uh, new constructions seem to be selling a lot higher money, and a lot more buyers are on them. Like we just sold one for eight hundred sixty thousand to two family. Never think it was seven ninety nine on the market. The bids went up to eight sixty. Wow! I'll be putting a two family on the market recently in the next day or two for seven forty nine. I'll probably get eight hundred thousand for it. Yeah. For new construction though. Oh, it's, brand it's new. all brand new. Stainless steel, the granite countertops, the whole nine yards. You know what I mean? Everything's really top notch. So as you said, people are bidding. Like you put seven hundred and people paying eight hundred. So. It is hard to, to buy a house, especially for a first-time home buyer. Yeah, what I suggest, try to always get a conventional loan. Try to stay away from FHA. FHA, when there's multiple offers and there's conventional 5%, conventional buyer, 10%, 20%, you know, the price might not be as high, but that broker's gonna try to work that highest down payment buyer up as high as they can get up. 
get that buyer. Okay. So she's going to play with those numbers. The broker's going to play with those numbers. So if you come in at 5% down, you've got to come up with a good number because you're only putting 5%. And FHA is 3.5%. And, and FHA buyers, if an appraiser comes in and doesn't like the scraping paint, some paint needs to be scraped or something needs to be painted, they, they'll nitpick it. And they'll tell the, the seller to fix the, fix the problem. And the seller doesn't want to do anything when they got tons of offers in their hand. They don't have to mess with that FHA buyer. Okay, so that's harder I, for them. Right. It, it's just an aggravation. So I should just go conventional loans. If that's the only you can do is get an FHA loan, then do it, and that's the best you can do. What's the difference between them, like paying less? They said 5%. 5% down versus 3.5% is oh. FHA. It's a type of loan is affecting the buying process. Yes. Other, other, other uh, difficulties. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and that's, I've seen it happen. You know, you look at a property, you're an FHA buyer, and you, and you, know, you, you go 10, 20,000 over asking, and the house does not need any work at all, you're going to get the deal. It's a good chance you're going to get the deal. So you know what I mean? It, it, it's if you look at a house and you see, and it needs this, and it needs that, and needs this. And there's no FHA, there's no way that they're gonna let an FHA buyer buy it. You you make it like very easy. Only the difficulty is the bank. You, there is no other difficulties on the buying process. Well, as long as you, you have clean credit, good credit, naturally, and and, and your your income's gonna come involved. I mean, everything's gonna. They, it's all formulas. It's all they. It's all numbers and formulas. And, and I would, something I want to make clear, when if you bought a home and you bought a single family home and you go buy, the, go buy a two family home, even though it's only your second house, you got to put 25 to 30% down on that property because now you're an investor. Even though it's only 20 units or 10 units, two unit family, two family, you have, you're an investor automatically. Oh, okay. So a little bit different than the, the, the loan process? No, it'll be the same loan process, 25% down, and it'll be going right through a regular mortgage guy. That's it? Not, not even commercial. Okay. No commercial loan, nothing like that. A regular, regular rate, everything's regular. But you just have to put the large down payment. What the things that I will start paying as an owner that I don't have to pay when I rent? Okay. Um, what are you... The, one, it would be definitely taxes, okay. and definitely homeowners insurance, okay. and if it's in the flood zone, naturally flood insurance, and water and sewer, water and sewer, because naturally you have to, have to pay for your own water and sewer. You're not you're in an apartment, and you okay. have the whole building. You know what I mean? That the, the landlord pays for the water and sewer. So we, you don't want to terrify buyers. Uh, so the, all the, the stuff you will start paying them, but they will be included. The, the, the mortgage. Yes, definitely. Uh, I mean, that, uh, the water. Maybe. Water and sewer so not. That's no. the only thing that's not included. Yes, but like you will pay a lot of stuff, but that will be like include the mortgage. Yeah, yeah it's called principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, P-I-T-I. And I have my mortgage set up that way too. I like that because I don't have to worry about it later. They pay my insurance. They pay my taxes, the escrow. And if you own the house, you don't have any loan. You have to pay them. Still, you have to pay those stuff. The, the war, the, 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 the tax, and the insurance, even if you own the house. Yeah, when you own the house, yes. You, you, you still have to pay them. Yes. And that's the utilities, too. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, the utilities, I If someone doesn't like the house, if I bought the house, for example, in Boston, in, like in Haverhill, uh, Massachusetts, and I don't like the location or I don't like the house, and I want to sell it and buy another one, it is hard. Is it? It is hard. It's a little, a little difficult because you're selling and buying. It gets a little tricky. Uh, what it is is this: you, any you can definitely have no problem selling the house as long as it's priced right. Okay. And when and when you have to put it on the market before you start looking and finding a house because no one's going to talk to you until your house is under agreement and at least a commitment letter is on it. A commitment letter is that means the bank just approved your buyer and saying they're buying your house. We'll close it in two weeks which is the greatest thing that you can hear when you're selling your home. Okay. okay. So once you, now you have a commitment letter on your buyer. Now you have, now you're going to go out and start looking for property. Now, cause you got your place under agreement. So now you, when you go find this other property, say you like this property and you make an, you want to make an offer, you make a contingent upon you selling your, selling your home 
and passing papers, whatever date is supposed to be passing papers. But you're putting a contingent upon selling your home because, God forbid, something happens to that buyer, he gets hit by a car, or he pulls his, does something to his credit, because they always pull your credit at the end of the loan. They pull your credit at the beginning, they pull your credit right before they give you the money. So oh, you wow. cannot ever, once you go for your approval, don't, don't buy a car, don't go change a credit card, don't get a new credit card. You keep everything the same until you close. That's a big mistake that people make. They'll go buy a car. They'll get approved and they'll go buy a car and then they can't buy a house. Oh, so you tell them like, don't buy anything, don't do, buy cash if you want to buy. Yeah, don't, you don't use your credit at all for anything until you close. Because that will mess up everything. Okay, so but like, uh, if I have a, a mortgage for three years. You can sell the house anytime you want. Anytime, there is like. It's, you have to keep the loan for at least a year. Okay. For at least a year. And you can't sell and then, 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 and some of them banks will, will penalize you, a, like a couple of points or something like that. There, because sometimes they have you sign contracts like that. I've seen them at closings, and sometimes banks don't do that. Oh, okay. So you got to make sure you, what you're signing, you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Can I can I sell this house tomorrow without being penalized? You ask the bank that, the Wait, bank or that. Is there a difference between a fixed mortgage and the other? A variable. Yes. Fixed mortgage, yeah. Fixed mortgages right now are four and a quarter. The variables at three point six two five, and that's like could be a seven year arm or a five year arm. That means in five years that rate can change, and it can go up two points on you. It can go up a point on you, but it, it, the maximum can go up is two points at a time. Oh, okay. Per, so they have year. max. Yeah. There's a maximum. Max. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure. We well, appreciate me. that. Oh.